Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Ajay Markun and I will be coordinating today's session. First, I want to do a quick check, so please just write down in chat if everybody hear me well. Okay, great. So now we can start. You can address your questions during webinar in chat and we will address them later at the end of the webinar session. Also, a recorded version of this webinar will be available on our website. This is SIJ Acronis second webinar in a series of webinars dedicated to our SIDUR and CMAX brands. Today, we will talk about welding recommendations for SIDUR and CMAX steel segment. The last webinar in the series, Bending Recommendations, will be held at the end of October. You are all warmly welcome to attend. We will send you the invitations for the event. So, let's do a quick review of SIG Acroni. SRG Acroni is a producer of flat rolled steel products. We are part of SIJ Group, which is the largest steel producer in Slovenia. SIJ Group is a vertically integrated business structure that ensures complete control from scrap to final product. Now, I would like to introduce you to our main presenter, Mr. Andres Kumauts, which is our research engineer for SIDUR and CMAX steel segment. Andre, please. So thank you very much, Anje, for this introduction. I'm sure that some of you have already been listening to our previous webinar, which was about the cutting recommendation of SIDUR and CMAX grades. But for all of the participants who were not present during our, the, our previous webinar, we have to tell you or explain you some basic information about those two construction, uh, construction steel grates. So SIDUR and CIMAX steel grates are both part of construction steel grates. And for construction steel grates, of course, it is expected to have assured bendability and weldability. But before those two processes, the material is also cut to smaller pieces from which we produce, let's say, different type of constructions or structures. Mostly we, we, we can make uh, like loader cranes, work platforms, mobile cranes, tangent bars, concrete pumping equipment, truck and trailer chassis, or wheel loader buckets and excavator buckets. So, my name is Andres Komauts and I'm working as a research engineer for carbon steels and also as a research engineer for welding technologies of special steels. And today I will present you a chain of three webinars, not today, I will present you a chain of three webinars from the field of processing very resistant steels and high strength low alloy construction steels with SIJ Acroni commercial names SIDUR and CIMAX. A chain of those three webinars will give you some recommendations how to properly processing CMAX and SIDUR steels. First webinar was about the cutting and the video version of this webinar is already available on our webpage. And you can also watch the webinar if you click the tab News and Media and then you follow the link webinar. Today, we will go through the welding instructions and recommendations and the last one, so the last webinar from this chain, will be about the bending. This chain of three webinars will only be about the processing instructions. At this point, I have to announce that my colleague from the research and development department is already preparing one special webinar, which will be about the high strength, low alloy steel CMAX 1100, which is already available in the form of the quarto plates. 
So Sidur and CMAX steel grades, they both have high yield strength and tensile strength, beside impact toughness, which is in the range of conventional construction steels. And those properties are achieved with special chemical composition, through carefully controlled hot rolling process, and through carefully controlled heat treatment process. Those factors are also a reason that more care, of course, is necessary for cutting, welding, and bending operations to be done safely. So welding is an operation in which we join permanently at least two materials into the welded structure. Those two materials could be of the same grade or could be of two different steel grades. This is, let's say, an important factor to know because in approximately nine out of 10 occasions, those two grades, so CMAX and CDUR, are combined with, let's say, conventional steel grades like S355 or S235. High quality of end products is also defined by right choice of steel in combination with proper technological steps during the manufacturing process in the workshop. So the cutting, welding, and bending operations should be done according to the producer's instructions. Regarding on the equipment, which is, let's say, used in the workshops by the final users, of course, we know that some adjustments are always necessary. So SAJ Acroni produces three main grades of high strength, low alloy construction steel grades, which are made according to the requirement of international standard for, the, for fine grade uh, yield strength steels in quenched and tempered delivery condition. Those grades have commercial names CMAX 700, CMAX 900, and CMAX 1000, with the corresponding yield strength of 690, 890, to 960 megapascals. Thickness and width depends on the quality of the steel. Of course, also other grades from this international standard with lower yield strength are available according to the agreement with the customers. For example, for special orders or for really small quantities, we can also produce uh, CMAX 500 or CMAX 550 grade. Those grades, so CMAX grades, are typically used for the application where strength to weight ratio is the great, is or let's say the most important factor. For example, as I said already on the beginning, typical structures are extendable boom lifts, trailer chassis, frames of the yellow good and agricultural machinery. The next product from our portfolio are SIDUR grades. Sidur is SIJ Acroni commercial name for wear resistant steels. We are producing steels with the nominal surface hardness from 300, 300, 350, 400, 450 to 500 Brinels. All those grades are delivered in quenched or in quenched and temper delivery condition with the martensitic microstructure. Under the name Sidur 3401, we also sell the 12% manganese austenitic grade, which is also used for the application with the extreme wear. This type of steel is probably, you already know, called the headfield steel. Also for cedar grades, the maximum plate thickness depends on the grade. Typically, those grades are used for the wheel loader buckets, for the excavator buckets, for different mining equipment, for tipper boxes, and different hydraulic equipment, which is used, let's say, in yellow good machinery. At this point, I also have to tell you one really important thing. Internally, in our daughter company, which is called SIJ Electrode Esenice, we are also producing the welding materials in the form of the coated electrodes for stick welding and massive or cord wires for gas metal arc welding which are necessary to weld the plates of our steels into final products, so into the final structures. So let's go to the webinar main topics. As already mentioned, we will give you some instructions regarding welding of CMAX and CDUR grades. This will be done through six main topics of this webinar. At the beginning, we will just go through the processes which are mostly used or most widely used, 
to weld high strength, low alloy steels into final products. We will also repeat all the necessary steps which are required to be done before and during the welding process. I will also try to inform you with the main parameters that have the biggest influence on welding. In the fourth part of this webinar, we will just briefly discuss the filler materials which are used on CDUR and CMAX steel grades. I will also go through the main properties of the welded joints that shall be fulfilled. Most of them, so most of the mechanical properties, are also defined with international standards from the field of welding. The last part of the webinar will be, let's say, more for the technologists in the workshops. So we will go through the distortions, which always appear when the heat is used for the welding process. As seen in this webinar, we will not talk or we will not explain the preheating or interpass temperatures. Preheating is, let's say, an important step when welding high strength, low alloy steels. In the first webinar, we explained the importance of preheating prior to thermal cutting process. As thermal cutting has similar effect on microstructure as welding, I would just like to inform you that all details regarding the preheating, so the methods that are used, how and where to measure temperature, can be seen and downloaded from the previous webinar, so the webinar for cutting of CMAX and CDUR grades. There, you will also find tables with recommended minimum preheating and maximum interpass temperatures. So let's go to the processes that are mostly used. CDUR and CMAX grades can be welded using all arc welding processes. Preferably on industrial level, we recommend to use gas metal arc welding process with the massive wire. The second option can be manual metal arc welding or, or as Americans say, stick welding. Stick welding is normally used for on-site assembly of the components and not, it's not that widely used in the workshops. The main reason to avoid stick, stick welding is in higher content of hydrogen in the weld metal and also in the slack formation. Slack, which remains on the surface of the weld, can cause imperfections, and therefore, this process should be avoided in the workshops. In some special cases, for example, for complete root penetration, we can also use the gas tungsten arc welding process. What is also important to point out is following. Welding of CMAX and CDUR is not more complicated as welding conventional construction steel grades. It is only important to know important factors and the proper steps that should be followed before and also during the welding procedure. In modern industry, high strength low alloy steels are also welded into constructions or let's say structures, which are only partly made of non-alloy conventional grades. For example, S235 or S355 grade. One example could be, let's say, the truck tipper bodies, where we have a combination of CDUR and CMAX, or a combination of S355 with CDUR, or CMAX grades with conventional S355 grade. Now we will go to the steps that should be followed before and during the welding operation. The first step before welding is always to check the materials that will be used for construction or structure. So for all companies that are certified according to ISO 3834 section two, it is a standard for comprehensive quality requirements for fusion welding of metallic materials. So for all those companies, it is necessary to check the grade and thickness of the plates because those two properties also directly define the carbon equivalent value. For welding of high strength steels, it is also important to choose low hydrogen filler materials. So gas metal arc welding with solid wires is let's say the first option. Always check the surfaces where the welding will be done. So the area, particularly the weld edges, 
shall be free of any oxides, scale, moisture, emulsions, or grease. You should also check the welding procedure specification. And if this specification, so list of welding parameters that guarantee the properties of the welded joint is not available, please check the welding instructions together with the welding engineers and welding technologists. If you will use stick welding, it is also necessary to dry or redry coated electrodes according to the manufacturer's instructions. This is particularly important because wet electrodes can increase the risk of hard hydrogen induced cracking. Also, all preheating recommendations should be followed as specified in the data sheets of the steel or as it is specified in the welding procedure, procedure specification. One really important thing is, let's say, more for the technologist, for stable welding and also for stable welding arc, it is necessary to check the wire feeder, the shielding gas nozzles, the wire fit nozzles, electric cables, ground connection, electrode holder, and also wire fit rollers. So let's check how the chemical composition actually affects the welding. So we will try to explain some details about the carbon equivalent. The most well known definition of the carbon equivalent value is following. So it is a measure of tendency of the weld metal and also the heat affected zone to form hard and brittle martensite on cooling. Here we have three different equations on this slide, but mostly used is the first one. So carbon equivalent value is directly defined by the chemical composition. We can also observe that carbon as the first element in the equation has the biggest effect on the carbon equivalent value. All other elements like manganese, chromium, molybdenum, vanadium, copper, and nickel have lower effect on carbon equivalent value. As known, when welding high strength steels, we are in safe region until we have a carbon equivalent value up to, let's say, 0.4%. In this region, there is no negative effect on weldability. But once the carbon equivalent value increases, more care is necessary for welding. And let's check how carbon equivalent value affects mechanical properties. On the first side, the tensile strength and hardness of the base material increases. The elongation of the base material typically decreases and the drop of impact toughness may also be expected if the carbon equivalent value increases. The PCM value can be treated as a special kind of carbon equivalent. It is also called a crack suspectability factor. From the experimental results on high strength, low alloy steels, maybe some of them were made on scientific level, some of them also from industrial level, it was observed that PCM value up to 0.35 is not critical parameter. In this region, cold cracking is not likely to appear in the heat affected zone of the material. For better explanation, how carbon equivalent value affects weldability, we can also use Graville diagram. In this diagram, we have a carbon equivalent value on horizontal axis and the carbon content on vertical axis. In this diagram, we have three zones which are divided by lines and high strength, low alloy steels are typically located in the zone two or in the zone three. Zone two, is let's say a safe zone and problems during and after welding are not likely to appear. The most critical zone is zone three. In this region, we also have, for example, our C-Dur 500 grade with thickness of 50 millimeters. For safe and quality welding, this type of steel, we should use preheating, heat input control, and maybe some post-weld heat treatment like slow cooling and use of, use of insulation blankets. The main step is also to have control over the hydrogen diffusion. And therefore, 
it is almost a must to choose among low hydrogen welding process and also we have to choose low hydrogen filler materials and therefore stick welding should be avoided the next parameter that affects welding is the heat input heat input directly influences the properties of the heat affected zone According to definition, it is amount of electrical energy which is supplied by the welding arc to the workpiece. And in our case, the workpiece are the, place, the plates that are welded into final structure. Heat input in combination with preheating or interpass temperature gives us an indication about the microstructure in the heat affected zone. The heat input is also calculated during the welding procedure qualification report, which is the main document when we are preparing welding procedures. So it means if the heat input during the welding in the workshop is in the same range as it was used during the controlled welding procedure qualification record, we can expect the repeatable microstructure in the heat affected zone and hence also repeatable mechanical properties of the welded joint. If, if we want to have control over the heat input, we have to control following welding parameters as it is shown with this equation on the slide. We have to control the arc voltage, we have to control welding current and also the welding speed. For gas metal arc welding, the heat efficiency factor is defined as 0.8. So what it means, it means that there is approximately 20% of heat loss due to the reflection and radiation. Internally during the steel development process, we are also making different tests regarding the weldability of CMAX and SIDUR steel grades. One of them is also standardized taken test. This is a self-restraint test which is performed to investigate cold cracking appearance. In this test, we have two plates with the weld edges in a form of a letter Y and they are welded together. But before welding, the plates are also preheated to a suitable preheating temperature. And after welding, it is necessary to wait at least 48 hours because we have to give hydrogen enough time to let's say escape from the weld metal. Additionally, we make five cross sections of this test weld. And after sectioning, we are looking for cold cracks, which typically start in the root of the weld. So in this case, it is also in the middle of the plate thickness. Additionally, we can also measure the hardness over the weld joint. On this picture, so on this slide, you can see an example of this test, which was performed on, on CMAX 1000 grade with thickness of 15 millimeters. As seen, there is no cracks detected on the cross section, even though that the test weld metal was, was welded without preheating. So it was welded at room temperature. Also the hardness in the heat affected zone is below 450 vickers, which is the maximum hardness defined by standard for welding procedure specification. On the following slide, you can also see how the hardness is distributed over the welded joint. So this example is from CMAX 1000 grade. It is an example where two plates with 15 millimeter thickness were welded together using gas metal arc welding. The welding wire with yield strength of more than 890 megapascal was used for this welding. And overall, eight weld bits were necessary to completely fill the joint. Maximum hardness was measured in the area close to the fusion line and the peak values of, of let's say 430 vickers were, were, were measured. So it means that with this strength of the plate material, so 960 megapascal, we are close to the limit value which is set at 450 vickers. 
The maximum hardness is also defined in the standard for welding procedure qualification record. Of course, the maximum permitted hardness is defined by the base metal, but the values that are reached are affected also by the welding parameters. So CMAX grades belong to the group three according to the standard for metallic material classification system. And for this group, so for the group three, we are limited with 450 vickers in the heat affected zone in the, we say, as welded condition. Typically on structures that are made of CMAX grades, it is also almost impossible to make additional heat treatment like any stress relieving. Sidur grades or wear resistant plates produced by other producers, they do not have a standard where all the mechanical properties and also chemical composition would be defined. So what it means? It means that welding wear resistant grades is much more under the agreement between the producer of the construction and let's say an institution which is doing the examination of the test weld. So from this first part, we will go to the filler materials. First, we will go through the filler materials for sidur grades. But the, at the beginning, we have to give you some basic information. In construction engineering, wear resistant steels like sidur or CMAX grades are not always welded with the same grade. So sidur with sidur or CMAX with CMAX. There are different combinations as seen from this schematic presentation. So conventional S355 grade can be combined with SIDUR or CMAX with SIDUR, or as it is seen on the third example, S355 can be combined with CMAX. When there are two different materials in the joint, the undermatching in mechanical properties is to be expected. So we recommend to use filler materials that guarantee high impact toughness. And if you have to choose between strength on one side, and impact toughness on the second side, you shall first choose the first one, so the high impact toughness. Construction engineers should also position the welded joints in the areas with the low stress. What we also recommend, for example, when we combine two sidur plates, is to position the welded joint in the region where we have a low abrasive wear. So sidur plates have high tensile properties, so yield strength and tensile strength. So therefore, when we weld sidur plates into the construction, the weld joint will have, let's say, lower tensile properties as the base metal. This phenomena is called undermatching in mechanical properties. So the weld joint efficiency factor, where we divide the yield strength of the joint with the yield strength of the base material is lower as one. And for sidur grades with the hardness up to 450 Brinel, we recommend to use gas metal arc welding process and use of massive welding wire, as it is called VAT60 or VAT65. They are both produced by our daughter company, as I said on the beginning, SIJ Electrode Senice. For higher hardness, like SIDUR 500 grade, we suggest to use MIG 75 wire. And if the strength of the joint is not a crucial parameter, it is also recommended to use lower alloy filler metals like VAT60. In this case, we will have high impact toughness in the weld and, also, and as, as a result, the weld joint will have lower tendency to call cracking appearance. The next operation, operation on sidur grates is, we, we call this process hard facing. Hard facing is normal process on the components where material is removed due to the sliding of the abrasive materials over the surface. One example are for, the, let's say, wheel loader buckets or excavator buckets all bulldozer shields, which are all made of sidur plates. So typically during the hard facing, 
we apply up to three layers of weld material that has much higher hardness compared to the base metal. And in some cases, we can also do the hard facing with the materials that have small carbide particles distributed all over the weld metal matrix. And with this hard facing process, the lifetime of the worn components can be effectively prolonged. So here on this slide, we have one example of the hard facing process. Sidur 500 grade was hard faced with Edur 600 coated electrode, which is also produced by SIJ Electrode Esenice. This hard facing electrode is also one of the products that is widely used for on site repair welding operations. And as seen on this diagram and on the picture, with three layers, we can get the surface hardness up to 700 wickers. What is also important to mention is that due to the heat input during the hard facing process, some hardness drop appears in the base metal, so in the heat affected zone of the base metal. This is seen between both red lines on the diagram. This is also a reason why it is important to make the hard facing process early enough, so when we have enough base material left for the hard facing. I will just show you some examples of the hard facing filler materials. Our daughter company, SIJ Electrode Esenice, produces different hard facing filler materials. So for on-site repair welding operations, so repair welding with the stick welding process, we recommend to use coated electrodes with the commercial name Edur. Due to the relatively high carbon equivalent value of the wear resistant materials, so base material plates, it is necessary to re-dry coated electrode prior to any repair welding operation. And for hard facing in the workshops, you can also choose between different flux cord wires for gas matter alg welding. So those wires have the commercial name fill tube dur. If you need more help at this step, you can also contact our technical, uh, technical persons in the sales department and I'm sure they are ready to help you with all the instructions necessary. Now from SIDUR filler materials, we will just switch to the filler materials that are used for CMAX grades. So with CMAX grades, we have, let's say, similar situation as it was already mentioned for SIDUR grades. So CMAX is welded with SIDUR grades or also other low alloy conventional construction steels. Some examples of the base materials which typically appear in the welded joints are also shown schematically on this diagram. And the properties that the welded joint should have, so mechanical properties, are always defined by the weaker material in the joint. So for example, if we weld S355 grade with CMAX 700, so this is the last combination in the picture, there is no need to use high strand welding wires. Due to the undermatching in mechanical properties, the fracture is to be expected in the lower strand base metal, so not in the welded joint. And if we use filler material materials with lower strand, so due to the low mechanical properties of S355 grade, we can also directly minimize the appearance of cold cracking. And if we take a look on high strand structures where two, let's say, CMAX grades are welded together due to the due to the high strength to weight strength to weight ratio which is required. Then there we normally have to weld directly the same combinations. So for CMAX steels, gas metal arc welding is mostly used process. And regarding on the materials that are combined together in the joint, we also have to choose the suitable filler materials. I just want to show you some practical examples of 
of filler material selections. So if we weld conventional grade like S355 together with CMAX 700, then you choose the filler material according to the properties of the weaker material. So this is the S355 grade in this case. And then you choose the VAT60 wire with the corresponding yield strength of more than 420 megapascal. This yield strength completely fulfills requirement of the lower alloyed conventional steel grade in the welded joint. So CMAX 700 grade is typically used for different frames. In this case, we recommend to use MIG 75 wires and the weld joint will have the yield strength of more than 690 megapascals. The third, let's say example, could be the tipper boxes, where we have the combination of CMAX 700 grade with CDUR grade, so with wear resistant grade. In this case, we should have tensile properties which are defined also by the weaker material in, in the joint. And in this case, this is the CMAX 700 grade. And due to this reason, we recommend to use MIG 75 welding wire. So let's just check what are the main properties of the welded joints. So mechanical properties of the weld joint, so especially of the joints on CMAX steel grades, are defined according to the ISO standard for welding procedure qualification record. And the main properties which are defined in this standard are following. The first one, yield strength, then tensile strength, impact toughness, so impact toughness in the heat affected zone and also in the weld metal, then the maximum hardness in the heat affected zone, so it should be measured really close to the fusion line, and of course the bending properties. And each company which produces different structures from those steels should therefore make a welding procedure qualification record. So in this record, we have a set of parameters which result in acceptable weld. So it means it is a company specific qualification that proves that company has, let's say specific knowledge which is necessary to perform a metal welding work. So we internally, so SIJ Acroni, as a producer of the steel grades, can make welding procedure qualification records. But those report, records can only help the final users to perform welding work with the highest level of quality. So generally, a new welding procedure qualification record is required or is necessary each time a new welding procedure is introduced in the, let's say, into workshop, so in your workshop. So in our company, we are also regularly making the welding procedure qualification records on our steel grades. And to evaluate the properties, we make bad weld joints according to this figure on the slide. So here we have one example how we cut different samples from the plates. So the tensile specimen, the specimen for a root and face band testing, specimens for side band testing, and also smaller plate to cut the impact toughness specimen. The same procedure, so the same procedure as it is shown here, is also necessary for you, so for the final users, when you want to become a producer of the welded structures from those steels. So we can help you with the instructions really anytime you will go through the qualification procedure. The band test of the welded joint is, let's say, the most complex test on high strength low alloy steel grades. Why? Because high strength low alloy steel grades have a yield point really, so a really high yield point and relatively low elongation. So for example, CMAX 700 grade has the elongation in the range between 14 to 17%. And now we are also in the development process of CMAX 1100 grade. And this Example here shows exactly the situation on this grade. So 
This is an example how the specimens, so side sideband test specimens, looks like. In this case, the plates were welded. The plates with thickness of 15 millimeters were welded together using the gas metal arc welding process. And as seen from the figure, all specimens passed the test successfully. So no cracks appeared on the samples after bending with punch diameter of 80 millimeters. The next important parameter of the welded joint is impact toughness. Impact toughness is, let's say, the ability of the material to absorb energy before the fracture occurs. So if we explain even more simple, it is just a measure how much rapid energy the weld can take before the fracture appears. So impact toughness of the welded joint shall not be lower as it is specified for the base metal. And for high strength, low alloy steels, the minimum value in transverse direction is set at 27 joules. So what we want from the welded joint is that impact toughness in the weld metal and also in the heat affected zone is not lower as 27 joules. And here we have again one example of impact toughness testing on CMAX 1100 QL grade, which is, as I said, on the beginning and in the development process. What we achieve normally is 40 joule. 40 joules, let's say, in the weld metal and approximately 85 joules in the heat affected zone. So from the basic mechanical properties, we will go to the last part of the webinar, which is, I think, the most important part for the technologists in the workshops. And this part will be about the distortions. So, to minimize distortions during and after welding, we can really give you only some, only some main orientational steps. And I'm sure that you from everyday work, you can really learn a lot and you really know how to minimize the distortions on the structures. Most of those instructions, as I said, really come from practical experiences. But just to tell you some basic steps. The first one, you should not over weld because the bigger the dimension of the weld, the greater the distortions after welding. Then the second one, use intermittent weld instead of continuous long welds. And with every welding pass, the shrinkage will also accumulate. So what I suggest is to try to weld a small number of big weld passes instead of large number of small weld passes. And welds should also be positioned near the, let's say, neutral axis of the structure. Then you should also weld from both sides of the neutral axis because the forces that are generated during and after welding will counteract each other. You should also use the backstep welding and maybe the last really, the last two really important factors or steps are following. You should use the slight pre-deformation or, or preset of the welded parts because during welding, the structure will shrink. So the distortions will be also really, the distortions will be really small. And the last one, you should also use the clamping devices. So with this presentation, the first part of the webinar is I think over. And I really hope that most of the important points that should be followed for safe welding were let's say clearly presented. And if you have some questions which really came to your mind during the webinar, you are really free to ask. So just write the questions and please ask me. Thank you. Andre? Thank you, Andre, for this comprehensive knowledge you shared with us. Um, so let's start with the questions, like Andre said. Um, the first one, which which really came in quite um, 
quite early is Mike is asking you, Andre, which shielding gas do you prefer for the welding wires that are typically used for gas metal arc welding of CMAX and CDUR grades? Oh. So, uh, thank you for this really technological question. Uh, it is not that easy to answer those those questions from the workshops but the shielding gases are let's say divided into different groups according to international standard for gases and different gas mixtures for arc welding operations so what i suggest mostly we use the mixture of argon with let's say approximately 20 so between 15 to 20 percent of co2 and with this composition, we have, I think, the, be the best control over the molten welt or the, the molten welt metal. And what is also important from the technological point, if we add a little bit of CO2 into the argon, we have really small amount of spatter during the, 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 the welding procedure. So, the additional work in order to clean the parts after welding is really minimized. So this is my answer. Thank you, Andre. So the next question comes from Peter. What is the difference in cost regarding welding when upgrading from conventional grade to high strength grade? Okay, thank you. Huh. Um, it is really hard to to say that what are the welding costs because the welding costs consist of about two parts. The first part is the are, is the labor cost, and on the second side we have the cost of the materials that are used for welding so the equipment filler materials and so on so the labor work is i think in the same level as it appears during the welding process of conventional steel grades so it is a good part to use high strength uh, steels for the final structures but on the other side, we have to know that the filler materials that guarantee the high yield strength and tensile strength of the welded joints are a little bit more expensive. But overall, so if we combine the costs of the labor with the cost of the filler materials, I'm, I'm sure that the cost when we are using the high strength steels are on the same level or or can I think decrease? Perfect, thank you. <laughs> so the next question comes from Steven. Primer on the delivered plates. Is it necessary to remove the layer before welding? Primer on the delivered plate. So the uh, the customer asks about the the primer that is used on the surface of, of the plates in order to preserve the plates uh, against uh, rust formation and so on if i'm right so if this is the the right uh, uh, the right primer typically when if the plates are coated with the primer you should remove the primer from the area where you will do the welding operation because the primer on one side has a uh, good property so the primer preserves the the surface of the plates but on the other side if we are welding directly on the coated or let's say coated plate some some imperfections can appear in the weld metal so the typical let's say imperfections that appear if we are welding directly on the primer could be the porosity 
And the problem with the porosity is that it is not detected directly. It could not be detected directly during the welding process. In most cases, you can detect much later, so during the non-destructive testing of the weld metal. So my suggestion is to be safe is you should re always remove the, the, the primer from the welded surface. So we don't have any additional questions like it's, it's in here. Um, I would once again like to invite everyone to, to ask something um, if there is any interest regarding the welding and recommendations. Okay, so otherwise I don't see any additional questions, but um, we would like to thank everyone for attending this very interesting webinar. And at this point, uh, we would like to invite you to our last in a series of webinars, um, which is called Bending Recommendations, um, which will be held at the end of this month. So we will send all of you the official invitation um, and we would like to see you there. Andre, is there anything on your side which you'd like to add? Yes, I would just like to point out one important, let's say, information. So the chain of those three webinars is really only about the processing of CMAX and CDUR grades. As I said on the beginning, my colleague here from the research and de development department will prepare one really special webinar which will be about the CMAX 1100 grade, where you will, all the, so in this webinar, we will present all the mechanical properties, the microstructural properties of, of, this, of this steel grade. And also we will go into the details regarding the welding, bending and cutting recommendations. I think that high strength, low alloy steels are getting more, more and more important in the in the workshops and they are widely used so you are really welcome to to listen to this the last so the fourth webinar and this is this is everything from my side so thank you very much okay thank you again from my side and see you on our next webinar thank you